Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife consult for you on the Black Snow Customs Mini Sabotage. If you go back on my channel a couple of weeks, you'll recall the video on the Spyderco Subvert. This is a monstrous knife based on the Black Snow Customs Sabotage, the full-size knife from knife maker Nati Amor, who uh, owns and operates and is Black Snow Customs. He is an Israeli knife maker, and uh, he's relatively new to the game, been here just a few years, but is making a huge impact, and we're going to figure out why today. So I'm going to go ahead and move the production knife off the screen so we can focus on this fantastic custom handmade knife right here. Now, a little bit of backstory on the knife maker himself. Mr. Nadia Moore, like I said, is from Israel, but his background is in jewelry. He is a jeweler. He made jewelry. Uh, I believe he still does for some of his living. And he decided one day that he was dissatisfied with the knives that he had. He told me that he wanted a knife that he could use to cut sausages. Uh, and what he meant was he was dissatisfied with the angulation of knives so that uh, for when he was cutting his food, he wanted a knife that sloped in such a way that he could very easily prepare food. And thus, the very manatee-like appearance of the sabotage was performed. I hate saying that out loud. I've joked about it with some of my friends, but I can't help but see the shape of a manatee when I look at this knife, the underwater sea cow, because of this sort of unusual appearance of this knife. And I needed to know why it was shaped like this and why it looked like this. Because for me, on first glance, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. It's sort of an awkward, sort of globular thing. It looks almost like a spatula. But in talking to Nazi about what he wanted the knife to be, it makes perfect sense. And after getting it in hand, and then certainly using it in the form of the subvert, I'm not going to be using my friend Mike's knife here uh, very much. I'll thank him here in a second. But using the subvert, you notice that the recurve blade draws material into this curved belly, and it works very well against a flat surface. And so both of his objectives were achieved with this knife. Now the large version, as you can see, is super large, and so it, one of his most popular, probably the most popular knife that he makes right now, is this small Sabotage. And it's been very difficult to get this in hand because there are only like 30 of them in the whole world. He is a custom knife maker, and these knives take an incredible amount of time. And I'll show you why. Uh, and so this is very rare. And I wanted to just go ahead and thank my good friend Mike, who goes by Bloomin' Blade on Instagram for sending me this knife. He went ahead and sent me the Shirogorov Pero as well as the Coltrotech Zeem. Some very interesting and hot knives on the market right now. So thank you very much, Mike, for this substantial investment in my channel. Uh, let's go ahead and break this knife down. Let's get some vital signs on the mini sabotage right here. So what makes it mini? That is the fact that it's got about a 3.6 inch blade. The other one is uh, over 4 inches at 4.1 inches. It's coming in just under 8 inches in overall length, 7.95 inches, I'll probably call it right there. Four and a quarter inches on the handle with an effective grip area right at 3.75 inches. I'll bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison. I will go ahead and lay out the subvert one more time so you can see the difference between what is the full size sabotage and the mini sabotage. Let me bring out a common knife right here. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. You can see that it is smaller than the Para 2 and bigger than a Para 3. So it slots very nicely in an EDC plus sort of size category. I really enjoy that size right there in between those two knives. Uh, so let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. This is such a spectacular knife. I'm gonna spend a long time going through the details on this and hopefully capturing most or all of them. Up front is a blade done in beautiful damasteel. Now, one of the things that Nati brings to the market is his jeweler's eye for perfection. A jeweler must use microscopes and loops and look for any minor imperfections in the facets 
or in the inclusions of a of a gemstone they must look at the polishing of any of their uh jewels and their their rings and uh, you know the attention to detail is immense in the jeweling industry because those things need to be perfect because of the investment that people will have this is no different what nati does very well is he polishes his blades very nicely he does these videos on his Instagram where he's holding the blade in a bunch of soap suds and then he runs it under the water and it comes out all shiny. It's almost pornographic the way that he does that. And he just has such an eye for detail. And then the way that he etches his damascus steel is spectacular. If I'm going to run my finger across this, you would anticipate that there would be rough patches where the sort of uh, oxidized steel feels like it catches your finger but it is so smooth and so perfect that indeed it does not now i'm going to wipe that off for the purposes of the video so that you can see what's going on the thing is ground as a full flat grind out there at the tip and then a bit of a high saber grind right here it's not the thinnest uh sliciest knife that you'll ever see out there and the subvert also follows suit uh, it is a bit of a chunky thing, and it is a bit uh, widely ground. This Spyderco, you can see there's a bit of a chunk of material still there at the base of the of the grind right there. Here is similar in a way. There is a bit of a smile. There is a bit of a triangle there at the end of the, of the grind right there. So this is not going to be uh, as slicey as a PM2, but it is unlikely to be ever used in such a situation as a PM2. This will cut whatever you need for a regular EDC uses whether that is boxes, tape, cord, rope, food, and that is what it's really designed for is to be held like this so that that blade swoops all the way down onto the table and you can just set it right there, drag it across and cut your food. That is what Nadi made it for. That is what it's designed for. And it does that exceptionally well because out at the tip, it's much thinner. It's ground, uh, you know, it tapers out to the distal end here and it's thinly ground and full flat ground out there. So to that end, it works very well out at the tip. You can see the, the spine remains rather robust all the way out, and it tapers right there out to the tip. Beautifully etched uh, and crowned spine right here. I didn't mention that before. It is crowned. Uh, not 100%, but that, that is rolled, and then this these are knocked down here on the edges. Uh, I actually sent this knife all the way to Israel for a quick spa right before this video. Uh, we had noticed that there was a small amount of corrosion happening on the stop pin. And Nati, uh, let me just, let me make a testament to the maker himself. I addressed this with Nati and he responded immediately. And he said, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I didn't realize that was a thing. Please send it to me. Please let me fix it free of charge. No charge to you or to Mike. Let me fix that for you and uh, we'll get it done. And I sent it to him and he did it in a couple of days and he sent it back. That is customer service, guys international customer service i sent this on like a monday and i got it back on a monday like the next monday it was very quick i just want to reinforce the excellence that is nadia moore it's not just that he's excellent at making knives it's that he's a good guy easy to talk to super nice and dedicated to his customers uh and and service this knife immediately and uh he didn't owe me anything he didn't need anything. I didn't pay him for it. It meant nothing to me. It's not my knife, but he still did it because that's the kind of per perfectionist that he is. And I certainly appreciate that. I wanted to testify uh, to that, to that excellence that he has. So there is an external stop pin. You can see that it strikes the uh, frame right here. Uh, one of the things that's very interesting, we'll go ahead and move back and talk about the pivot. This thing runs on ball bearing washers, super, super smooth. One of the things that I enjoy about this knife is the way that the scales overlie the frame. The scales uh, are larger in some areas, like up here, larger than the frame, and so they cover up some of the uh, less beautiful bits when you turn it this way. And here the scales are a bit thinner, so the frame is actually revealed here and here. It's a very neat effect that's unlike uh, maybe any other knife currently available from an aesthetic standpoint right there. Uh, I'm a big fan of a strong stop pin. I like that look, and I think that it provides for an easy mechanism for opening and closing. Very, very secure. Absolutely no blade play in the closed position at all. Uh, the flipper tab is nicely angulated. Uh, it is not sharp. Uh, it's a bit, 
a bit of a pecker, but uh, it works beautifully if you, you can either light switch it or you can push button it, which is my preferred method. I feel that it gives you a very perfect vector uh, with which to push that flipper and it fires right out. Very, very crispy detent. Uh, and if I'm looking at this correctly, the detent ball has been shaved ever so slightly. Maybe it has just a tiny bit right there at the tip for a ridiculously smooth drop shut action. Now, this knife in particular has a very, very, very faint amount of lock stick. I'm not going to call that lock stick so much as it's just positive lock engagement. This reminds me a bit of what I call the Shirogorov stick, which is to me... Uh, just a small amount of friction that's generated when disengaging the knife. From my understanding of lock geometry, that's actually a very good thing. You really don't want to have a knife with no friction or even the seems like not enough friction because that lockup may not be secure. This actually gives me confidence that this lockup is very secure. Now, it is a titanium frame against a steel knife with no insert, but that's okay because Nati understands geometries here. So let's take a big look here at one of the most impressive parts of this pivot and of this knife in general. This is a special feature to this specific model right here. Take a look at the, at the pivot, at the pivot hardware, and tell me if you recognize that those screws are made out of Moku Tai. Can you believe that Nati, in his pursuit of perfection, created... Mokutai screws himself. He turned these screws himself. Beautifully, beautifully done. Perfectly polished and then perfectly colored to match <clears throat> the bolsters on this knife. So let's go ahead and talk about the handles here. We looked at that. I'm just blown away. Every time I look at the pivot, it just bewilders me that that's a reality. No one is doing this. This is this is like no one is doing this. Okay, this is what makes Nati a level above. No one's doing this. Turning their own Mokutai screws. That's amazing. That's some incredible stuff. Let's take a look at the rest of the handle here. As I mentioned before, it has these very unique scales <clears throat> where they cover up the ugly bits and they reveal the beautiful bits. Uh, there's some beautiful uh, Zerkutai going on right here, and some marbled carbon fiber on the handles here. There is a full-length Mokutai backspacer and a Zerkutai clip. Absolutely incredible stuff. Carbon, marbled carbon fiber pivot collars to match those beautiful, beautiful scales. What I do like about this knife in particular is that the shading of the grays and the blacks are very consistent and very subtle, and there's really only a small splash of color. It is a very tastefully done combination. Uh, very nicely done. <clears throat> if you look on the inside, it is not internally milled in any significant way. That does keep the weight up a little bit. This guy with uh, all of these uh, beautiful bits like this are, is coming in right at 5.56 ounces. I'll weigh that one more time. 5.56. So not terribly heavy, but certainly over the one-to-one -one ratio that I like to look for. But this is not going to be your standard EDC knife. Now, Mike carries this knife routinely. When he sent it to me, it was covered in tape and gunk and stuff, so it's obvious that he uses these knives. But uh, at five and a half ounces, it may not be your, the same as your super lightweight Spyderco, and that's totally fine. In the hand, the ergonomics are extremely unique. Uh, this knife, with the way that that flipper tab rests right there, it's just beautifully balanced. It just balances just right, if I can get it on my finger the right way, right there in that finger choil. The, it just grabs the hand. The way that it curves down is really nice. And the way that that blade sweeps down makes for a very nice user experience. It's, it, it, it adds sort of a, a length to the blade and a usability to that blade that some other knives certainly don't have. I'll just bring out another knife. I've brought out this Paro a couple of times, but you can see if I put their handles even, you can see the way that this blade slopes down, allows for the ease of use uh, in that regard. Now, <clears throat> these knives are extremely difficult to get. Nazi's books are closed and extremely long, and these knives are not cheap. These are going to be coming in in the multiple thousands of dollars range. 
if you look at the auctions, they're going for seven, eight, ten, whatever, just huge numbers. Uh, and so good luck trying to get one. I, I don't encourage you to try to get one of these because it's going to take all of your money in that sense. But I do encourage you to get one if you have the money, if you have the means, because Nati is an amazing guy. He is just a nice guy. You can have a conversation with him. He's very passionate about his work and he makes a really nice knife. I understand what the hype is about. Absolutely perfect attention to detail. Absolutely perfect fit and finish. Take a look at the way that there are titanium standoffs under the clip here. It's a floating clip. It's a floating back spacer. Hidden hardware everywhere. Hidden hardware everywhere except this beautiful Mokutai screws. The, the perfection that's going on here is second to none. And I get it now. I really do. I understand the hype. The hype is real. These knives are beautiful. They are spectacularly made. And Nati is really only just getting better. Every knife that he makes is more spectacular. He made one of these with some Mammoth and some Damacore. Unbelievable stuff. Definitely pay attention to Nati Amor at Black Snow Customs. Go and follow him on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his website down below. Let me know what you guys think of the small or mini sabotage here. Thanks again to my good buddy Mike at Bloom and Blade for sending this one along. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like what you see here. Follow me at uh, Dr. Frunky over on Instagram. And as always, guys, take care.